hello again. I know this background is very unprofessional for filming a video, but I can do a little story time about my car buying experience. So when you go and you're trying to buy a car, you would involve your dad or someone else in the process usually. That's what I plan to do because I don't know how to go into a dealership or negotiate. The thing is, is that I was starting to get impatient because I was going to these dealerships after work and I was just sick of having to go and spend that chunk of time. I mean, I didn't want to wait. I didn't really want to accept help or ask anyone else for help. I just kind of got this thing where I was like, you know what? I want instant gratification. I want to get this over with now. In hindsight, looking back, obviously it was a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to do it his way. He was telling me that I should go to a separate bank and try to get a loan from there. That would mean I would have to make another trip to a bank I don't even have an account to and then try to figure out how to get a loan there, which I didn't understand. I kind of just internally decided it. I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm tired of this, Grandpa. That's too damn bad! Being the stubborn person that I am, I decided to go rogue and just do it myself. The first one I decided to go to after work, it was because this guy sent me a video from this dealership. The thing is, is he said, God bless America in the video, so... Bitch, are you dumb? Pardon me? Are you dumb? I think she's I dumb. I think she's dumb. I think she's dumb. Think are you... Dumb. Like, medically speaking. Are you like he's patriotic he seems like a great guy like, i have a feeling so i'll go to that dealership first so i'll preface this by saying throughout the whole process like, i don't have a bad thing to say about my salesperson so i was at a ford dealership right i do not like ford cars at all and i know you might be asking why would you go there i don't know i don't know really i think i kind of was thinking like maybe i'd get a truck or i was thinking that they would have different types of cars there and then one of those would fit what i wanted coincidentally he happened to have a hyundai tucson when i went there because at first i sat in a ford eco sport and that was kind of small and i was like it's mm, not exactly what i'm looking for like bottom line i wanted bluetooth and i wanted to be higher off the ground than a regular car then after that he happened to have a 2017 hyundai tucson and I was like, shut up, because I love Hyundai, I love Honda, and I love Toyota. You know, he showed me the car. Mind you, I couldn't even go until I got off work, and I was getting there at like 5.30. We're looking around, so it's getting dark. It was nighttime. I barely saw the car, really, but I just knew it was a Hyundai. You know, just wanting to get it over with, so I was like, okay, cool. Excuse me, um... Long story short, I'm signing these papers, I'm paying, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Hey, you doing all this extra shit, you stupid bitch. And people ask me after the fact, they're like, oh, what was your interest rate? What's your, what, what, what was this? What, what, how much did you buy the car for? What was the price? Couldn't tell you. I could not tell you to save my life if you held a gun to my head what my interest rate was. I know I'm interested in the car. We are going to pretend we didn't hear that. Is that how much I like the car, my interest rate? I am not understanding. I don't, I don't get it. What ended up happening? A couple times here and there, my boyfriend and I, we would see like this, like a little bug or a little roach. At the time, because they look different than the bigger roaches I'm used to, I, I at first wasn't even registering that they were roaches. I was just like, oh, this is a bug. One day it was rainy outside and I saw one on the door frame. I assumed, you know, maybe it's because it's raining or something. I just, it wasn't really clicking for me. But after it happened three, four or five times, me seeing a bug, I, you know, especially like on the door frame, I thought to myself, like, there's actually bugs. I reached out to the dealership and then at that point, once I started realizing that there was an issue, I kind of couldn't drive the car, if that makes sense. First of all, if you know me, I'm terrified of heights and I'm terrified of bugs. For me personally, I'm just, I don't know how y'all do shit where you from, but let me tell you something, where I'm from, we don't do oh, shit like that. that. Driving wise, during the day, I would drive it, but I would be really anxious. And then I would not drive it during the nighttime because I, I just, I just, I just couldn't. I'm taking the car to the dealership. I'm telling him there's this issue. I'm emailing him about it. He's like, oh, you, know, you can come in we can bomb it and clean it or whatever, right? So I bring it in and then I do all that and then I get the car back. 
and pretty much every time I had to bring the car, they would give me a loaner car. So that was nice, you know, that I was without a car per se. But every time I got my car back from them, the bug problem was still happening. Cut the cameras. Dead ass. I still like couldn't drive my car so I basically had bought this car that I can't drive. I would refuse to even talk to my father or tell him that I bought a car because I didn't want to say that I bought a car without him at a dealership and didn't do what he said and what he wanted me to do. Hey, you, you don't answer my phone, don't call me, don't say a damn thing to me. You, If you get hungry, starve to death. Bitch. At this point, I'm like, okay, so I tell him, and my boss actually helped me lift up the back seat one day, right? And I'll include a picture. And it was gross. The back seat cushion under there, there was uh, like stickers and candy and all these crumbs and hair, and it was disgusting. That and other little spots in the car, you could kind of tell the car wasn't really thoroughly cleaned, obviously. There were stains on the seat, which I couldn't see while it was dark. I also had to point out to him too, I, I made him lift up the spare tire in the back, in the trunk. And there was all this little crusty stuff in there, like you could tell that that's where roaches were nesting or eating or whatever the hell they're doing. It was in there. Off the motherfucking drugs, off the drugs, off the um, off the motherfucking drugs, off the drugs, yeah. off the um, off the motherfucking drugs, off the drugs, Psycho. off the drugs, um, off the mother. I showed him that supposedly after they had cleaned it. He's like, oh, okay, you know, we'll vacuum that and wipe that real quick or whatever. So they did that. And then there's still a problem. So I bought her back and then he's like, okay, we'll, we'll bomb the back, the trunk too. We'll, we'll bomb it again. So all in all, they probably bombed it like three to five times. Bombing it doesn't kill the babies and they're reproducing every day. So I expected to still see babies potentially and I was looking into how to fix that and then I ended up seeing that the seat was dirty reaching out to them and I was like look I just really want it to be thoroughly detailed and then I'll feel better and they were like okay they took it back they took the car and they were cleaning it right or something we came and we got the car so at this point because it's been thoroughly detailed I've already brought it there a few times I'm thinking to myself this is over you know this is finally over everything's great yeah I'm just on this missing you are yeah it's a really hard missing that's oh. why I'm wearing these boots. Oh, you got I'm not going to be dealing with this anymore. Me and my boyfriend, we went somewhere. It was nighttime, and we got back in the car, right? I ended up seeing a roach right here by my head. I was in the driver's seat, so I jumped over onto him in the passenger seat and then jumped out of the car. <laughs> and he ended up taking pictures right after that of inside my car. There was five roaches just hanging out in there different sizes and we literally couldn't even drive my car home we had to call our friend that we were with to come back and pick us up to take us home because he lives right kind of like right across the street i mean that's ridiculous I feel like all in all, when you have a bug issue like that, it's like one thing people have said is that for one, if you've got a huge infestation, they could be chewing on electrical things or stuff like that. Like you don't know what they're messing with really. The other issue would be obviously safety. Like if one crawls or flies around and you're driving, you could get in a car crash. The other thing too is the bacteria factor, like how gross that is because they leave, they leave diseases and bacteria everywhere. sent those pictures to my sales guy Phil and I was like these are pictures from last night there was like five roaches in the car I'm really sorry but I literally can't do this anymore and he was like okay I had to wait another week basically because he was saying that they will trade the car but they were kind of saying that that had to, it had to be the exact same value they were looking but as some of you might know with how the market is right now there are no cars there is a shortage it's tough right now in that sense it worked out kind of good because that allowed me to just kind of walk away from it and find a car that i really wanted they ended up saying we'll buy the car back from you and Thank you.
So that was a relief and I feel like part of that was because you know throughout this whole thing I was very stressed and frustrated but at the same time I didn't let myself get too upset or worked up about it because I said this is not in my control right now I really just need to throw it up to God really because God's gonna handle it it's gonna work out how it's supposed to there's no sense in me getting worked up about it and I feel like in the past if something happened to me with a company I feel like I'm getting mugged off or something like that I will left a bad review I would have lost my shit. I wouldn't have even known how to handle it. I would have been so baffled and overwhelmed in this situation. Well, over time, I'm learning, you know, you kind of just need to be patient, nice, calm. I'm learning that I want to be able to look back on situations that I've handled, not be ashamed. They did this to me, but this is what I did back. I don't want to have to do that. I want to just be able to look back on things, share my experience on whatever I go through in my life, but I want to be able to look back on it and say, yeah, I handled that to the best of my ability 100% that's happened with a few things now it's a pretty cool thing throughout all of it I wanted to get upset and frustrated I wanted to be aggressive with them and threaten them but sometimes you don't need to go that route kind of handle it patiently and calmly first I ended up having to call my dad though and being like dad and this is what happened I'm humbly coming to you now apologizing that I went broke and did this without your guidance as a direct result of not having your guidance here Here's the situation I'm in. The car is infested with German cockroaches. Papa, Papa. Yes, Johnny. Do you love me? No, Johnny. He didn't even do a big I told you so. He was like really happy to be helping me now. It was a big lesson for me too because it's like, first of all, don't be impatient. Don't be impulsive. Ask for help. Let people help you. You don't have to do everything by yourself because sometimes you end up shooting yourself in the asshole. Basically, I had to call my dad and talk to him about that because one, now I needed an actual car. And two, I wanted them to actually go with me to the old dealership when they were doing the buyback paperwork because I wanted to make sure that everything was on the up and up and I have no idea how that works or what to ask for. He did, he went with me and it was pretty quick. Again, I was getting a little bit impatient while we were looking for the cars and stuff, but this time I just kind of had to trust the process. Trust my dad, trust that everything was gonna work out how it's supposed to. Let him take the lead on that. We went to these different dealerships and we looked around. We finally ended up finding a car and he put the heat on those people. He really, he dropped the heat in that dealership and I was just sitting there sipping my Red Bull and I was like, okay. I mean, he was nice. It was impressive, it was, it was assertive. Now, I have what I actually would have wanted ideally in the first place. The car I got before was totally overpriced it was the worst year for tucson's it was dirty it didn't have any extra features it was the basic trim you know i had nothing excuse me and this one is a 2018 toyota rav4 xle with a moonroof push to start power trunk safety features it's amazing and i really love it and it's a unique color i would say the only issue now i'm facing is the fact that oh and by the way when i went to go do this new car thing this time around my credit score was higher than it was in the first place so it's it's just so crazy how it all worked out to be a completely better situation than it was initially it was almost like the roaches were terrible but they were my ticket for a do-over if that makes sense and i know it sounds silly but I, I truly am traumatized still about the whole roach situation. I feel like any time now that I do see one, I just feel attacked. Like, I feel like I'm in hell. I feel like I can't escape. Look, she's crying. Do you hear her crying? Like we care. I don't give a... I just feel awful. I hate roaches. I don't understand their purpose. I am just so sick of it. Even now getting into my car or any car in the nighttime or going outside during the nighttime, I'm so anxious. My stomach hurts. I get itchy. I'm looking around and I'm so sketched out. And to make matters even worse, I got into my boyfriend's car, which is obviously totally a separate situation. I fucking go to sit in the back because we were about to go pick up his friend. I said, oh, he can sit in the front. Yet I turn on the flashlight as soon as I sit down. There is a fucking huge roach bug by my feet on the floor. A huge one and I screamed I jumped over to the other side I'm banging on the door telling him to let me out because it was locked he 
opens the door, I jump out of the car, and I had to end up driving my car to the place we were going, like, separately. And I'm just sketched out the entire night, you know, just feeling all flustered and shaky. And it's like, why? Why is this a part of my daily existence and life? Like, why? Why is this happening to me? How does it feel to live my dream? That happened kind of recently, and at this point, I'm just fucking over it. Like, I feel like the next time I see one, I'm legitimately like, I'm gonna go to the police station or check myself into a mental hospital. Like, I just cannot do this anymore. I, mean, I was thinking to myself, you know what? Maybe living in an igloo in Antarctica would not be so bad. I would suffer in any conditions if there could be guaranteed no bugs. I can't stress this enough. I am done. I cannot take it anymore. That's my story time. We'll call it RPTSD, Roach Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. Thank you so much for, if you even watch my videos, thank you. I just think they're really fun to make and edit. It's making me happy. I just enjoy doing it. I was thinking about this the other day. It's crazy because I know a lot of people these days, like there's so many YouTubers and there's so many people, like that's what we do now. We take videos on our phone and we're always on our phone and our cameras. But I was thinking about myself and I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm so unique, you know. But for me personally, like, I've kind of validated myself in the sense that I'm making videos right now. And I'm, I was questioning, I was like, why am I enjoying this so much? And I feel like the reason why, it's not just one of those things where you're trying to hop on a bandwagon you're like i think i should make a youtube channel you know what i mean like i'm not trying to do that but i'm thinking back and i i probably i even have the video somewhere i'm sure but i had the little cameras and things like that when i was younger right when i was a kid and i swear as long as i've could remember just had all these little devices and I would just go around and I would take videos outside and take videos with my friends um, I would film myself doing different things or talking doing little fashion shows I've always been doing this and I've always had a passion for it. it really made me happy when I was younger I think for a while I didn't have a great camera but I've always made snapchat videos and little things like that but to actually really be making videos now and editing them and tapping into something that really just brings me joy that i used to enjoy when i was a kid and i think ultimately that's the goal for me personally is to be happy and just be doing things i enjoy in life and potentially things that other people might enjoy too